So the 2023 National 5 Paper 1, just a quick sketch here. Just going through them all very quickly, not looking at any other techniques, just what would I do just to get the answer? Well, first one for two marks, a basic little division of mixed numbers. Well, that one's a mixed number. First step, get them into single fractions. So that makes that a 13 upon 6. And don't divide, turn it into multiply by the reciprocal. Then multiply the parts if you wish. But cancel first, just to make it easier later. So that'll be a 2 and a 3. So that gives me 39 upon 16, which I presume you'd have to put back again. 32 is two of them, and there'd be 7 left over. So 2 and 7 sixteenths. So the second one, ex three marks, expand and simplify this, a little algebraic expression involving the square of a bracket and then just a bracket be multiplied by a number. So square the bracket, square the first, twice the product, I'll go to 14x, square the last, 49, they're all positive, and then six times each of those, so I'll have six of those x squareds, but minus, there's the only negative, minus the 60, now tidy it up, seven for the x squareds. Only one thing says x, plus 14x, and that's minus 11. Number three, three marks, simultaneous equations here, right? So let's just get one of them to get knocked out, probably go for the y's here. So my plan will be make them the same. So I'll have two of them, and I'll have three of them. Now just multiply them appropriately, double everything on top. 4x, 6y, 16, three times the bottom. 15x, but 6y, because that's what you want, and that'll be negative 6. Now you've got to decide how you're going to get rid of them, having got the same number. Well, I'm actually going to subtract the, bot the top away from the bottom. I'm going to do 2 dash, that's the altered one, take away 1 dashed. So bottom take away top. That's going to be 11x. They go, that's what you wanted. But that'll be negative takeaway. That'll be negative 22. So x is negative 2. And then pop them back into. So I'll probably use, I'll just use, no, I'll use, no, I'll use this one. So using number 2, putting x is negative 2 into that gives me a negative 10. And a 2y is negative 2. So 2y is going to be 8. So y is going to be 4. So that's the solution. X is negative 2, Y is equal to 4. And you could pop back and tell them to check that if you like. Number 4, little parabola, and you've got the equation written in this completed squared form, which means it identifies this turning point, and that's what it just says. State the value of A and state the value of B. Well, B is actually the easier one because B is just how far up it's gone. It's 2, so you could answer that one first maybe. B is 2. You just have to be more careful with what A is. If it happens at the point when X is 3, then that's going to happen when the bracket is 0. So A would have to be a negative 3. It's the opposite of that. And then in part B, part B says P is the point 0, C. Well, having got that equation, just pop that into it. So the equation says this, y equals x minus 3 squared plus 2. So if you put those in, the y-coordinate c, the x-coordinate 0. That just says c is going to be negative 3 squared is 9, plus 2 makes 11. Number five, determine the nature of the roots of this function here, this quadratic function for two marks. Well, that'll just be the discriminant. What's b squared minus 4ac equal to? Well, what have we got? b is that's the middle term, the x term. That's a six squared minus four times. What's the first term? That's a four. What's c? What's the last term? That's a negative one. So that's 36 plus 16. So that's 52. Well, 52 is greater than 0, so that means you can make several statements about it. 
That means you know you're going to get answers and there's going to be two different answers, but they won't be nice answers. So what you could say is then you've got two real distinct, don't know many of the ones you need to mention, but also irrational. Don't know if that one's required or not. Roots. So those are the three things you can say about it. Number six for three marks, a little scalene triangle here. So either with the sine rule or the cosine rule, well, you've got two sides and you've got the information about the included angle. It's the cosine rule. What is the length of AB? So you just put down the cosine rule then. So that would be AB squared. You could go in straight with the figures, but I'll put it down. So it's these two. That would be the A squared, the B squared, minus the 2AB times the cosine of the angle in between. Won't be any marks for that. So what have we got? We've got the, put them in the right order, 6 squared and 5 squared, 2 times 6 times 5, and you know the cosine of the angle is a fifth, no, it's just wee bits of arithmetic, 36, 25, the 5's cancel out, so that's minus a 12 there, so that's going to give me a 49 very nicely, because that, that leaves me with a, a 13, which means AB is a very nice little square root of 49, which is 7, and it was all in metres. Because those were metres there. Number 7, a little linear modelling here. So there's a little scatter graph there of the wage against the, well, salary against the number of years worked. But there's two points marked on it because those are the ones you're going to use. So there's this point here which is 5 along. Now this is a nuisance. It would be better if P was actually the number of thousands rather than the actual number. Because it means you'd be writing all these zeros all the time. You can't really change that. And the other one's 25. And again, the number of thousands is 50. But you just have to keep writing the thousands in. So what's the equation of that line? Well, it's just the equation of a line. Where P is going to be the Y and T is going to be the X. So the first thing I want is its gradient. So that's the up numbers. I'm just going to go straight in with it though. So 50 take away 20 means there's 30,000 up the way, along the way from 5 to 25 for 20 along. Knocks off a zero and then knocks it down to 1,500. So that's the first part. Now just put it in, just use that. Except it's not Y minus B, it's going to be P. Just use this one. Minus the P coordinate. 20 is the gradient times, and it's going to be t, the x minus the x coordinate. So p is going to be 1500t, and then bringing all that across would give you, you've got the 75, well that's 7500, away from that, so that'll be 1200, 12,500. And for part B, use your equation to estimate the salary, that's the P. For somebody that's been there for eight years, that's the T. Well, you just seem to put that in then. 1,500 times eight plus 12,500. Well, that's going to be 12,000. And the 12,500, which is zero, it's all over the place. So 24,500, and it was all in pounds. Number eight for two marks, express this with a rational denominator, because that's not rational just now. Well, that just means you multiply the top and the bottom by whatever it takes to make that rational. So that would be, since that was a root 15, multiply by another root 15, but you have to multiply the top by the same. So you've got 12 root 15 over 15. Now it does say simplest form. Well, there's not a lot you can do with root 15. That's as simple as it'll get. But the 12 and the 15 will both divide by a 3. So you can at least get it down to 4 root 15 upon 5. So number 9, there we go. You've got these 10 numbers here. You have to find the median and the inter, not the semi, the interquartile range for 3 marks. Well, if there's 10 of them, 
what you do is you divide that by four, so that would go two, it means you can get four groups of two, but there'll be two left over. They'll get symmetrically placed. There won't be anything in the middle. So there'll be a group of two, that's on its own. A group of two, nothing in the middle. A group of two, that's on its own. And a group of two. So there's the quartiles. So the median, I'll just call it Q2 here. The median is going to be halfway between 38 and 41. I better put the working down. 38 plus 41 upon 2, difference of 3, so that'll be 39.5. And the semi interquartile, not the, I mean the interquartile range, well that'll just be Q3 minus Q1. So that will be the 42 minus the 35, which is 7. The first part was, this was for a magazine. So that Q2, maybe we'll just call that M with a small M, meaning the magazine was 39.5. That was the median age. And the interquartile range, I think I'll just call that R for range. The range in the magazine, like the range of the ages, was 7. Now for the newspaper though, probably N, it was 41 years. And its interquartile range for the newspaper was 9. And what it means here is, the two valid comments would be, compare the averages, say the medians, say what they mean, they mean average, and compare these interquartile ranges, because they mean spread. So what you could say then would be, for instance, for the magazine, the median age was 39.5, for the newspapers it was 41, not a lot in it, but they were younger on average. Magazine, readers were younger on average as 39.5 is less than 41, comparing the medians. Now what about the spreads? More consistent. Reader ages were more consistent for the magazine. As 7, the measure of the spread, is less than 9, which it was for the newspaper. So number 10 for the four marks here is a chord in a circle. Now I know there's a little curved part cut out, but essentially the width is the distance straight across to this chord here. So that means you just look for this right angle triangle. So you've got a right angle triangle here, which is made up of half of that chord, so that top part's 30, the radius, which is 50, and then this distance that you want, I'll just call that X. And the total width will be that x plus, and that's the radius again, so that's another 50. Well, there's four marks for this, and you can see the answer straight away. There's a 3, 4, 5 triangle. That's 40. Add on the 50, 90, four marks. But the, the, the one's some working. So I'll just put down x squared is 30 squared away from 50 squared. I didn't even notice I put it down the wrong way. You can just jump straight to the answer there. So x will be 40, because I recognised I've got a 3, 4, 5 triangle. I was putting the whole lot and that was centimetres. So the width is going to be that 40 plus the 50, which is it's 40 to the centre and it's 50 from the centre to the circumference. So that makes it 90 centimetres. Number 11, just a wee one mark question. It just says state the value, I suppose. State the value of sine 330. We just have to think. Where is 330 if you were to go round? It's all the way round to here, so it just leaves 30 sitting here, where the sine would be negative, all sine tan cos. So the sine of 330 is negative the sine of 30, and it told you that it's 0.5, so it's negative 0.5. Number 12 is worth three marks, but you can see the answer straight away. It does say give your answer with a positive power. So you wouldn't put one anything like this negative two up there. So you could put that underneath because a power negative two on top means it should really be a C to the power two underneath. And that could join the rest of them when you're multiplying them and you add their powers. So that would be a three plus a four plus the two that came down to join it which means that altogether it's 5 over c to the power 
9. It is 5c to the negative 9, but you have to write it with a positive power, so you have it like this. Number 13, just for two marks, and they're both just state. So in the first part, A, you have to state what A is. and the second part, B, you have to state what B is. Well, I suppose B is actually easier because it's obviously been shifted. A cosine graph should look like this. Just go up to 1, down to negative 1. So if it's, going, if it's starting at 0 and 2, it must have gone up 1. So B must be 1, so the whole thing's shifted up 1. And state the value of A. Well, that should be touching here at the bottom, which should have been 180. But here it's, there's three bits, it's at 210. So it's been shifted 30 along. But what you put down is a minus 30. Then 14, which is the last question, solve algebraically, no guessing numbers, this in equation here. Well, the first thing is get rid of fractions. Multiply everything by 15. So that'll be 5 times this. So it'll be 5x and 5. That's multiplying the top by 5. 3 divides into it. Don't forget that. 15 times that's 30. 15 times this, that'll divide the 5 out, will leave a 3. And 3 times that is 9x. Now, I don't really want to bring that over to this side, so I'm going to read it backwards. So reading it backwards, I'd have 9x minus the 5x, but I'm reading it this way, so I'm looking at the pointy end, is less than, and then leaving this part alone, 5 minus 30, tidy that up. 4x is less than negative 25, so x is less than negative 25 upon 4. And that should do it.